I want to make a video on finding the drive shaft angles, and uh, this is primarily aimed for the Cherokee, but it should work for many other vehicles. Uh, aiming for Jeeps, but it should work for many other vehicles. I find this important because, especially with lifted vehicles, it will change your drive shaft angle. Adding, adding or taking away caster up front will change your drive shaft angle. Changing axles, changing wheelbase, all of those things will change your angles, and. If you change them in a way that's not as good, what it will do is it might have more binding, vibration, or even break stuff, and it's helpful to know what you're dealing with when you change things. Um, also, when you lift it more and you might have to change drive shafts, such as going up in a Cherokee at least up about four inches or greater, you have to get a slip yoke eliminator, which changes your drive shafts, which changes the angles you're dealing with, which changes the setup for the angles you have to deal with, which we'll go over later. But it's helpful to know what it is you're dealing with how to measure it, and what to do. In my case, I have a Ford 8.8 in the rear, and that's set up for a double card and drive shaft, which we will go over shortly. And then I have a high pinion Dana 30 up front. This will apply for the front axle, for the high pinion or low pinion Dana 30, or Dana 44, really anything. And then in the rear for Dana 35, Ford 8.8, Chrysler 8 and a quarter, really any axle. Um, but just explaining the context of the differences between them. I do like the Dana 30 because the Dana, or the high pinion Dana 30 because the high pinion offers a pinion angle that's a little higher up, which means you get flatter pinion angles and you can get a little more caster out of it. So what drive shaft might you have? Chances are you're gonna have a single carton drive shaft in the rear if it's a stock or lightly modified Jeep. A single carton drive shaft is easily identified as having two U-joints, one on each side, and the angles, where the angles are more parallel. You'll notice if we draw a straight line coming out of the transmission or transfer case and a straight line coming out of the pinion, that they're pretty much parallel. The single carton drive shaft is a great cheap option for a drive shaft that works great for stock to low lifts. Once you lift it a little more, angles become a little too steep, and then it's in the territory of needing a slip yoke eliminator. But single carton drive shafts are the most common one you'll have on a stock to slightly modified Jeep. And the other type of drive shaft you might have would be a double carton. You're going to have one of these up front if you've got a four wheel drive, and you might have one of these in the rear if you have a taller lift or more heavily modified vehicle. They're easily distinguished by having two U joints on the transmission or transfer case side, and then one U joint on the axle side. Um, the other distinguishing factor being the slip. On the, instead of having a slip yoke like on a single carton drive shaft, uh, the slip is built into the drive shaft where the drive shaft itself can expand in length or collapse. And then the angles would be the final differentiating factor where the angle uh, is completely canceled out by the double carton setup. In the axle side, what you'll notice is the pinion is pointed almost directly in line with the drive shaft, where your measured pinion angle is going to be almost zero. In the case of leaf sprung vehicles, it's actually going to be about two degrees to count for axle wrap, but it's aiming for zero degrees. And then you'll notice that it just kind of bends off of the yoke. These are great for higher lift applications. They're generally better quality, and they allow more travel than a double carton style. Um, but they can be more expensive and a little more tricky to maintain. Whatever the case is, they're great, but you're going to have one up front. You might have one in the rear if it has more lift. Um, but yeah, you can tell with two U-joints on the transfer case transmission side and one U-joint on the axle side, and then with a pinion that's pointing almost directly in line with the drive shaft. And now we can start uh, actually measuring the angles. So now that we know the difference between what drive shaft we might have and understanding how the setup might be different, we can kind of contextualize what it is we're dealing with. So in my case, you'll notice that I have a Ford 8.8, .8, which has a different mounting flange than the other axles, such as the Dana 35, Dana 44, the Chrysler 8 and a quarter, and maybe other axles that could be found in your setup. Whatever the case is, the mounting surface is all that's being used. So it doesn't matter if you have a different yoke, so long as you're just using the flush mounting surface. Um, this measuring will also apply to the front axle too. Um, yeah, it's just all measuring the drive shaft angle, transmission angle, and the uh, axle angle is what matters. First thing we're going to start with is by disconnecting the drive shaft and then measuring the pinion.
if you have a slip yoke, you can also put your angle finder on the flat spline shaft that's horizontal to the ground, or the end of it that's vertical to the ground. Either way, you're going to get the same angle, and it gives you plenty of a flat surface to measure accurately. And this is important to do when the vehicle is at ride height because changing the, uh, the droop of the suspension or compression will affect the drive shaft length. If you're getting a custom one cut, what you'll want to do is let them know the ride height measurement. If you do have a slip yoke where the slip can go all the way in or all the way out, chances are the manufacturer will want you to put it right about in the middle of its slip and then measure from the center of the U-joint or mounting surface and uh, go from there to your axle. And now that the drive shaft is all greased up and if needed everything's all measured, we just install the drive shaft as we took it off, get it all mounted up, and then measure the drive shaft angle. Alternatively, this can be done before you remove it too. So now we know the pinion angle, which is 9 degrees, the transfer case or transmission angle, which is 2 degrees, and the drive shaft angle, which is 14 degrees. Now what we can do is uh, write these down, draw them out if we want, and then work to figure out what the angles are relative to one another. So now that we have our angles written down, measured, we can draw them out, write them down, do whatever we see fit to determine what the angles are relative to one another. So if we want to figure out what the transfer case to drive shaft angle is, or in other words, what the angle of the drive shaft is relative to the transfer case or transmission, what we're going to do is we're going to take our transfer case angle and subtract the drive shaft angle, which is 2 degrees minus 14 degrees, and that's going to equal negative 12 degrees, meaning the drive shaft is pointing 12 degrees below the transfer case or transmission. To find our drive shaft pinion angle, what we're going to do is take our drive shaft angle and subtract our pinion angle. And that's going to be 14 degrees minus 9 degrees. That's going to equal 5 degrees, meaning my drive shaft is pointing 5 degrees above my pinion. So now that we know what the angle is coming from our drive shaft and our transfer case or our drive shaft to our pinion, and we also know what drive shaft we're dealing with, whether it's a double carton or single carton style, we can determine what angles we're really aiming for. So on a double carton style, we're not necessarily aiming, we, we don't necessarily care about the uh, angle coming from the transmission to the drive shaft. The double carton takes care of all of the angle there. What we do really care about is that the axle U-joint is a zero degree angle. We want the pinion to be pointed right through the drive shaft and measure zero degrees. It's also worth mentioning that on leaf sprung vehicles, you want to aim, instead of for being at a zero degree angle, you want it to be a two degree angle. So where the drive shaft is two degrees further steeper than the pinion angle. This accounts for axle wrap because when the uh, axle is under load, it's going to point that pinion up and it's going to uh, get that angle to be zero degrees while driving. So that just counts for axle wrap. So Cherokees in the rear and YJs, they'll just want to have a two degree angle instead of a zero degree angle and uh, other coil sprung vehicles will, will just have a zero degree angle and if we had a uh, a single carton drive shaft we want the parallel angles so in a coil sprung vehicle let's say it's five degrees down we'd ideally want five degrees up from the pinion if it's leaf sprung we'd want five degrees down and then let's say seven degrees up or if it was one degree down, you would want three degrees up. All we want is that extra two degrees to count for uh, axle wrap. But otherwise, we just want the angles equal and opposite for a single carton, and then uh, a zero degree angle or two degree if it's leaf sprung for a double carton style. So here's a graphics by Adams Drive Shaft showing a double carton drive shaft and what angle you're aiming for. On a curl sprung vehicle, you want a zero degree angle where the pinion is pointed straight at, straight through the drive shaft and straight at the transfer case because no axle wrap, aiming for that zero degree angle. 
and then for the leaf sprung vehicle you're aiming for the two degrees because when you get the axle wrap it points that pinion up a little more you'll notice on mine that I had a five degree angle that's just because I've changed my suspension around and even transmissions so it's messed with my drive shaft angle quite a bit and I'm waiting to dial mine in a little more before I really make my pinion angle solid um, so I'm aiming for that two degrees it's just I changed a few things around but uh, five degrees I can still get up to 80 miles an hour without any vibrations but you're still aiming for that two degree angle 